Well, I'm sure by now you're all familiar with the notion of a function. Today we're going to look at what we mean by the inverse of a function and composite functions. First off, we're looking at the inverse. So we're going to look at a specific example. If we have a function f of x, which is equal to x plus 7 all divided by 3. We want to find the inverse of f of x, or the inverse of f. So the inverse of the function f is the, well, first of all we'll look at f takes an input x and gives an output. The inverse function will take the output of our original function f and return the original input. Okay, so it, it's, it's almost like well, it's exactly like if we multiply by 3, the inverse of that is divided by 3. Okay, it takes us back to our original number. But we want some sort of method of finding these inverse functions. And that is, we set y is equal to f of x. And then we rearrange so that we've got x as a function of y. We'll see that now. So if we take y is equal to x plus 7 over 3 that implies 3y is equal to x plus 7 and that gives us 3y minus 7 is equal to x and then we have the f uh, to the minus 1 of x is equal to 3 and shoot y in for x and f to the minus 1 of x as x. We can check this so if we take f of 2, this is 2 plus 7 over 3, that's equal to 9 over 3, which is equal to 3, and then f the minus 1 of 3 is equal to 3 times 3 minus 7 that's equal to 2. So this inverse function is working as we expect. When we get an output from our function f of x, we put that into the inverse function, it, it returns the input of the function f of x. Okay, so hopefully that is clear. And we'll now move on to looking at composite functions. So say we have two functions, one function f of x and one function g of x. And we want to combine these two functions. We can do that with something called function composition. And we denote that with this little circle here. And f of x composed of g of x is equal to f of g of x, alright? And this might look a little bit confusing, but all this means is we take our input value x, we put it into g, and then we put the output of g of x into f of x, okay? It's important to note as well that g of x composed with f of x is equal to g of f of x, and that is not necessarily the same with f of g of x, okay? So that's something important to look out for. So the order matters when you're composing these functions together. The best way to look at this is to look at another example. So we'll have f of x to be equal to x squared and g of x is equal to uh, x plus 4. Okay. So now f of x composed with g of x is equal to f of x plus 4 which is equal to x plus 4 squared and if we want to multiply that out we can't it's x squared plus 8 uh, plus 8x plus 16 
I love G of X composed uh, with that is not how you draw that uh, with F of X is equal to G of X squared and that is equal to you see g of x take x and adds 4 to it so that's x squared plus 4 so you can see that f of x composed with g of x is not equal to g of x composed with f of x hopefully this, is, this video has helped you understand composition and inversion of functions if you do have any questions on this topic about the Nelson A level maths let me know in the comments. If you enjoy this video, please like it. And if you want more maths content, please be sure to subscribe to this channel. I hope to see you in the next one.